Welcome again to TV 360's special broadcast on the 2023 Governorship and State House of Assembly elections. I am Mary Kanu. We begin in Lagos State as Governor Babajide Songwolu has cleared 18 of the 20 local government areas in the March 18 Governorship election conducted in the state. The All Progressives Congress APC candidate and incumbent who is seeking re-election has 718,595 votes at the collation of 15 local government results on Sunday. Someone who is ahead of Labour Party's Badi Bo Rhodes Viva, who presently has 257,502 votes from the 15 local government areas announced so far. The governor is also ahead of his People's Democratic Party counterpart Olaji Day Adedirong, who has 59,172 votes from the 15 local government areas. An oil state governor Shei Markin Day is in the early lead in the March 18 poll conducted in the southwest state with victory in 17 of the 18 local government election results announced so far by the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC. Of the 33 local governments in the state, 18 local government results have been collated so far by the electoral umpire with 15 more to go. Mark Day, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, is seeking re-election after his four-year term. He's seeking re-election with 15 orders, including Labour Party's Akinwale Tayo, as well as a servant senator, Taslim Folari, of the All Progressives Congress. Well, to speak more on matters arising from the polls is Muiwa Akintunde, political affairs analyst. It's good to have you join us on the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, um, collation is ongoing, although right now they're in recess. But um, one of the issues that came up in the presidential election is uh, the upload of the results to IREV. So I want to ask if it's possible, can this country see a situation where uh, we have real-time uploading of results to IREV? Should we expect this? Yeah, thank you, uh, Mary. Thank you, uh, viewers. Um, that's the ideal situation. And that was what um, INEC promised. Although it's not in the, it's neither in the Electoral Act or, or the Constitution, but it's in the guideline of INEC, INEC that there will be real time results, which means that results will be, will be um, pulled from the pulling boot, pulling boot straight to the IREM. Uh, but they are explained whether Nigerians uh, accept it or not, it's another matter. But they are explained that it has a series of attacks on their server um, during the election of three weeks ago, the presidential and national assembly election. But I think that they are not even thinking. They have done better now with these state elections, the governorship and national assembly election. Many results, many, many, fact, a lot of, I mean, in some other states, some states actually eat about 90 something percent of the results uploaded already in Ireland. Um, in some other states, about 50 percent Uploaded already in high level, high level yesterday's result. So I think that's an improvement. And um, one of the things that I also need to stress before we leave this matter is that whether the result is on uh, IREV or not, I believe that all the political parties have pulling agents and they already have the pulling results. But it would have been nice to have it on IREV so that every Nigerian, whether you are a pulling agent or not, whether you vote or not, you'll be able to see the results. Time. All right. Now, you know, yesterday's um, elections were beset with violence, which is a clear difference from what we saw in the presidential election. We could say the um, violence, the level of violence was quite minimal. But um, what would you say changed or what was the reason for the violence? Would you say there was some sort of trigger? Well, I would say that um, election generally, particularly in our client, there's no... We always pray that there will be no violence in our election. Mm -hmm. But what I see, maybe I'm conservative, is that there are pockets of violence, not that widespread as we are living it. But because the media is on it, it becomes like it's large. Whether it is one person or, or a million people that are affected by violence is regrettable and should never happen. Um, why it is so in this election of yesterday, more than the one or three weeks ago? Maybe because the people were expecting their candidates to win in the presidential and national assembly election, and they didn't win, and because INEC also did not do 
what they had promised by uploading results real time. So there was suspicion. And again, the political leaders are also not, candidates and political leaders were also not helping suspicion by making uh, statements that shows that they also don't accept results. Politicians generally don't ever accept results unless they win. It's when they win they accept results. And that soundbite is what the uh, supporters are acting on. So going into the election of yesterday, it was expected that there would be, there would be tension. Um, across. You, you recall that the police won't have to use a statement to say that nobody should be to bring uh, pets like dogs to the mm. polling booth because they knew that some people were pl planning to disturb the process. So that, that's what I think happened yesterday. Um, so um, a high level of vote buying was witnessed also in some areas, you know, across the country, even voter inducement. We saw um, a situation in Bauchi state where some people were giving bags of rice. You know, some people were also given as little as 30,000 naira. Um, so would you say that, um, how, how did we get to this stage? And would you say the essence of the naira redesign policy has been defeated? Um, well, Naira Redesign Policy for me was was really not something to kill vote buying. Uh, in our, I think it was something that was wrongly targeted at the election itself. Vote buying will not stop happening in our country. It's, it's so sad, but it will never stop happening until we make political offices less attractive. Um, our political offices are too attractive in this country. To find someone who is struggling either to survive or to cope with his uh, daily life or his family, the moment that person becomes elected, even at the local level, local government level, transformation that happens in his or life is instant. And so people see political office as the opportunity they have to make their life, you know, uh, um, better than, but than it was. So there is that desperation to get into it. What it will happen to happen to operate like, it, like some countries particularly in the Western world, where quality is actually service. The reason of the world is service. People who have, who, have succeeded, who have succeeded in their professional or other lives are the ones who go into uh, serving their community by contesting election. So long and short of what I'm saying is that political offices are too attractive. The incentives are very high. And so for as long as that happens, you will always have this kind of situation where people want to win at all costs. Whether they are, they are accepted by the people or not, they just want to win. All right, now, who you are, Kinton Day, political affairs analyst. Thank you for your time and your contribution. Well, with sorting and counting going on in most parts of the polling units, Nigerians are hopeful that the result from the election will be uploaded in the Independent National Electric Commission server so as to give credibility to the election, unlike what played out in the last presidential election. Speaking with reporters, voters in Kaduna express satisfaction with the election process, adding that their votes will count. However, voters also decry the low turnout of voters in the state during the governorship and State House of Assembly election. The process today was um, very smooth and seamless as compared to the one we had during the presidential election. They, 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 they came out very early and uh, by the time I came around 10.30, in fact, there were virtually no queues because the whole process was... Um, so, and, and because they came early, and a lot of people assumed they were going to come a bit late. So, you know, um, there, there are no queues. It was, it was quite, quite seamless and um, well organized, if I always use that word. You can only know the low turnout when you compare the total figures of votes as compared to what you got during the presidential. Uh -huh. I might not say low turnout per se, even though there have been skirmishes of voter apathy here and there. But that can only be confirmed when you compare the figures generally. Well, that's what we're discussing and we're hoping it's going to be uploaded because I, I did um, confer with other friends uh, in other parts of town and it said that the results were uploaded straight to the server. So we are going to insist that it is uploaded. Sincerely speaking, for my polling unit, it was okay. It was stress-free. So we didn't have any problem. I just came, I accredited, and I was given my ballot paper. I casted my votes. It was okay. Yes, last election, the turnout was high. So we had to queue. I stayed till 3 o'clock here. But for this one, I think the turnout is low. So that is why it was a bit stress-free. So I was able to come, accredit immediately, and then vote, unlike the last time. 
Gunmen have shot dead the All Progressives Congress campaign coordinator in Ahuada, West Local Government Area of River State, Chisom Leonard, hours after he was abducted. Leonard was reportedly kidnapped by the gunman dressed in police uniform while voting for the governorship and State House of Assembly elections was going on at Ibagua Polling Unit 2, Ward 10 in Ahuada, West Local Government Area. The APC chieftain, it was guarded, tried to stop the gunman from snatching election material materials when he was vexed away. The state APC Publicity Secretary, Darlington Wauju, who confirmed the incident, said Leonard's body was riddled with bullets and dumped in a pool of his own blood along Ubeta Road in Ahoda, West local government area of the state. And the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, has expressed sadness over the loss of lives in acts of violence carried out in the governorship and State House of Assembly elections on Saturday. Several incidents of attacks and voter suppression were reported across the country, particularly in Lagos State, where the party has established a strong support base ahead of the February 25 presidential election. In a tweet in the early hours of Sunday, Obi prayed for a quick recovery for the injured, saying it is a sad occurrence for people to be killed or maimed for participating in such a simple thing as an election. And hours after Governor Babagana Zulum cast his vote at the Ajari Ward Poly Unit 001 in Mafa, local government area, over 60 terrorists suspected to belong to the East Wap faction attempted to infiltrate Ahmed Bay, serving as coalition center for the March 18 governorship and state assembly elections by troops of the Nigerian army, but they met their Waterloo. Available reports from military sources have it that the terrorists stormed Mafa town in gun trucks and motorcycles around two a.m. and headed towards the military base where a collection of votes for the local government was ongoing. Troops of Operation Hadinkai annihilated the terrorists following an aggressively executed counter-attack operation which was support supported by Air Task Force fighter jets dispatched to the scene which bombarded the fleeing terrorists, killing a huge number while few who managed to flee left with fatal wounds. We'll take a break now and return with more election updates, so stay with us. Opinions are free, facts are sacred, the truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places, um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG 360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians are saying in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues.
Welcome back. Well, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SEREP, has filed a lawsuit against President Muhammad Buhari and the National Broadcasting Commission for the arbitrary use of the NBC Act and Broadcasting Code to sanction and threaten to revoke the licenses of broadcast stations in the country and shut them down over their legitimate coverage of the 2023 general elections. Joining the suit as defendant is the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Muhammad. The NBC had last week reportedly sanctioned 25 broadcast stations and issued final warnings to 16 others for allegedly violating provisions of the Nigeria Broadcasting Code during the February 25 presidential and national assembly elections. But in a suit filed last Friday at the Federal High Court Lagos, Serap is asking the court to determine whether the broadcasting code used by the NBC to sanction some broadcast stations and threaten to shut them down is not inconsistent and incompatible with freedom of expression, access to information and media freedom. The governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress in Benue State, Reverend Father Hyacinth Alia, is leading in the governorship race following results released by the Independent National Electric Commission. No fewer than 11 local government areas' results have so far been released by the Electoral Commission. The Catholic priest is leading in eight local government areas by a wide margin, while the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Titus Oba, is leading in three local government areas. The Enugu State chapter of the Labour Party has warned the Independent National Electric Commission against manipulation of results of the governorship and House of Assembly elections. Describing the report of thuggery and intimidation against its agents at local government coalition centres as unacceptable, the party said it would not accept any result that was not a reflection of the vote cast on Saturday by the electorate. Chairman of the party, Casimir Agbo, who gave the warning in a statement issued on Sunday morning, said the party was disturbed by wide-scale reports of manipulation of results going on at local government coalition centres across the state. According to Agbo, the party will resist any attempt to change the people's bill. And the Speaker of the Plateau State House of Assembly, Yakubu Sanda of the All Progressives Congress, has lost his bid to return to the hollow chambers. Sanda was defeated by the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Happiness, Matthew Akaru, in Saturday's elections for the Pengana State constituency seat. The PDP candidate scored 9,926 votes to defeat the Speaker, who polled 7,936 votes. And in Lagos State, the Speaker, Lagos State House of Assembly, Mudashiri Obasa, has been elected for a sixth term to represent Agege 1 constituency in the State Assembly. For INEC returning officer for Agege constituency election, Lukman Adeniji, made the declaration on Sunday at the Coalition Centre in Agege. He said the eight political parties fielded candidates for the election held on Saturday, but Obasa secured 17,214 votes to beat Rahim Alani of Labour Party, who had 3,933 votes, Kafayat Biobaku of the ADC with 62 votes, and the PDP, which got 1,609 votes. A collation has begun in Lagos State and our correspondent Gide Olaniron joins us now from the collation centre. Gide, thank you so much for joining us. Can you hear me? All right, Gide, if you can hear me, what's the, what's the latest update from the collation centre? Uh, yeah, um, right now we have been able to uh, witness the collation of about of 19 local governments. So we're just one shot uh, of one local government to conclude this exercise and uh, the reason why we are still waiting for this particular local government which is the Etiosa local government is the fact that uh, uh, some elections were rescheduled till today uh, about 10 polling units from the Etiosa local government uh, 10 uh, elections were rescheduled at 10 polling units and uh, I understand that uh, the elections were expected to start by it uh, 8 30 a.m. this morning and be concluded by 2 30 uh, p.m. and uh, from there uh, there will be an onward 
transfer of uh, results to uh, the world level and from there to the local government where there will be a collision at the local lo government level. Why, um, after that, then the result will be, uh, the, be taken to this particular state collision center. Um, that is where uh, the point we are, we are right now. And uh, um, according to the chief, uh, that's talking about the uh, chief uh, collision officer, um, the professor from university, uh, that's Federal University of Technology, Akure. Uh, the exercise will resume by 5 o'clock. So we are, we are expecting that uh, by 5 o'clock, the electoral officers and the, uh, the collation officers will be back by then for us to resume the collation exercise at the center. All right, now, um, speak to us about security. You know, um, yesterday's election witnessed a high level of violence. Has there been any security scare at the collision center? Well, what's the level of security presence there? Yeah, yeah, massive security presence. Uh, just like we had during uh, the last election, talking about the presidential and the national ele assembly elections. Um, I remember we were here till daybreak we were here for like two days during the presidential election and there are enough security around from the nigeria military that's talking about the army we have the police we have uh, civil defense corps the dss and uh, even we have other uh, maybe um, paramilitary agencies too not forgetting that uh, the fcc is also here we also have some the, the uh, election observers too are here as well as the agents of the various parties that participated in the election. Um, one of the things also that we observed during the collation process were when the electoral officers as well as the collation officers were returning, were exactly returning and um, during their reports, while they were delivering their reports, they also made, um, their reports also made mention of uh, the different issues that uh, characterized the election yesterday from uh, interruption to um, uh, voter suppression as well as um, ballot box snatching and uh, because those were the reasons given for some of the invalid votes so that is um, what some of the things that uh, formed uh, the process so far here all right, I'm Judy Olanura, the state, uh, Lagos State Collision Center, where collision has begun. Thank you very much for the updates. Well, that's the latest update on the 2023 gubernatorial and state assembly elections. Thank you for staying with us. I am Mary Kanu. Bye for now.